things that I thought would be really important to do before we hop into our lesson today um, was to just take a step back and recognize a few things. So there should be some information coming out to the entire school about the grading policy um, very soon that should clear up a lot of the questions we have. But just to give you some peace of mind right now, if you're logging into your Google Classroom, if you're checking in with your advisor, you're doing the things we need. So if you're doing those things, you are fulfilling what school is asking of you right now. Um, there's gonna be some information going out to you and to your parents to give you greater clarity about what virtual school looks like. But for now, just trust that if you've been doing those first two things, you're doing the right thing. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and hop into the lesson today, which is gonna be over Repent Harlequin by Harlan Ellison. Now, the full title is Repent Harlequin Said the TikTok Man. And the reason that I am shorthanding the title is one, that's a lot of stuff to say. Now, the real title is called Repent Harlequin Said the TikTok Man by Harlan Ellison. However, that's a lot to say in a video. And also, it kind of gets to a point I want to talk about with Harlan Ellison. He is a very, very cool writer, in my opinion, because he does a lot with structure and tone that you don't normally see from writers. Now, before we go too far, a lot of you guys have mentioned like, hey, I really miss like some of the more like basic stuff in school. And I didn't think I was gonna miss that. And I noticed that as a teacher, I was doing the same thing. I was missing things that I used to not really think about, but like they were important things to me that I love doing for you guys. One of them, weirdly enough, was writing on a whiteboard. So with that in mind, I've got some notes, some context for you guys. So if you have an ability, the way to, like a way to take notes, uh, you might wanna jot this down if you're trying to live that class life. Alternatively, um, the whiteboard that I'm using, I have a picture of it online in the Google Classroom as well. So if you just wanna have the copy of what I have, um, that's available to you too. So with that being said, I'm gonna switch it over to the whiteboard and then we're just gonna go and hop into the notes. All right guys, so we're just gonna hit the notes for repent really quickly. So our author, Harlan Ellison, I've already spoken about him in the intro, but he's a really cool writer who does a lot with structure. He's, he breaks a lot of rules in terms of what you'd normally expect a writer to do, especially when they're talking about a serious topic. So look out for that. As far as our focus is concerned, we're looking at how the author's tone and structure choices affect the main ideas and the themes of the story. So we wanna be thinking about how the author's tone and how the author seems to be treating his subject and his material is affecting how we're treating it. You, what you'll often find is that if someone's telling you a story, but they don't seem like they're that interested in the story, you get kind of bored. So how is that tone affecting your understanding of the story? Also, how is structure affecting your idea of the story? We're gonna talk about that in the context, but this is gonna be something to keep in mind with this story. Now, for context, since we're talking about theme, structure, tone, I want to talk about 1984 because this story has a lot in common with 1984 in a really funny way that you'll see a little bit later in the story. However, it's going to be different in a few ways. It has a wildly different tone. So we know 1984 was really kind of dark, really kind of somber, really fatalistic, but we're not seeing that as much here. You'll see it in a different way. See these same kind of situations presented in a slightly different way. It's going to be similar in structure, but repent is told out of order. So there's going to be three parts to consider, kind of like 1984 had three books. However, if we consider time, the beginning of time to the end of time, the story itself is told out of order. So we're going to read it part A, part B, part C, because that's how the alphabet works. However, what you're gonna notice is that events in part A are actually shown in part B, and then from part B, we jump to part C. Now, because Har the way Harlan Ellison writes, he doesn't use like 
a lot of transitory statements. So you're not always going to know where you are in the story, which is why making sure that you're reading and close reading and following along is key. Now, for the purposes of the story, the parts are broken up into basic sections so that you, sh you won't get lost inside of your own inside of the section. But it's just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about the story as a whole. Now, two literary, um, sorry, not lit devices, two vocab words I kind of wanted us to have in our mind this week. The first is dystopian society. Um, you guys, 1984 has killed that, but it's a society with numerous injustices. We're just working with that. We're keeping it moving. And the other thing I want us to consider is a parable. Now, a parable is a story that's used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. I'm not saying that the story is a parable, but I'm saying that I'm asking you about it right now in the introduction. So it might be something to consider. Anyway, with that being said, you guys have the story. The full text is in the Google Classroom. You should have a copy um, or sorry, you should have an image that's this whiteboard so that you'll have a, um, this note, these notes written down as well if you feel that you need them. So with that, I think you guys have what you need from me. I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to Miss O'Connor. Hi guys, and welcome to the introduction for part two and part three of your handout for Repent Harlequins of the TikTok Man. So you should be ready to take notes on these as I discuss them and pause me whenever you need to type something down. First is section two for big ideas. This is motifs or even themes that are present in the story that you wanna keep in mind as you're reading. Number one is small rebellions can have big effects. Uh, this is the lens that I would encourage you to look at the main character and the main character's motivations um, from. Number two is divide and conquer. You can look at this big idea from the side of the main character, the Harlequin, and his actions against the government, or from how the government enacts power over its citizens. Number three is that social compliance equals self-enslavement, or social compliance is the same as self-enslavement. Compliance here means when you do what you're told without thinking for yourself um, or questioning why you're doing what you're doing. You're just agreeing with what the power that above you tells you you should be doing. And so this social compliance, agreeing with what is being told to you all the time, is a type of enslavement. And the fourth one is betrayal. Um, in a thematic statement, we would usually talk about trust and betrayal. Um, uh, but in this story, betrayal is the biggest element um, I don't, you could argue that there's not a lot of trust at all. If you need to pause me to write those down, do it. I'm moving on to the next slide. So section three is key vocabulary, and there are six major vocabulary words separated into three different uh, subsections. The first one is theme. So there's two words inside of this theme. The first one is dystopia which you should know already, we've talked about this a lot. Um, a dystopia is a bad world or a negative society. It's usually imaginary, and it's a state government or a society where there's great suffering and great injustice. And authors who use dystopias in their writing are making a prediction or they're trying to create a warning for their readers about what would happen to society if people didn't pay attention to a certain issue. And in that sense, we know that they are making a social commentary. Do, 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 do. The next thing is totalitarian. You should remember this from 1984. A totalitarian government is a government that has total control over its citizens' lives. And this total power means that there's a total abuse of the power. There is no freedom for citizens, there's no legal way to protest the treatment that they're under, and they have no protection from their government. Pause me if you need to write those definitions down. The next section of vocabulary is devices. There are two major devices, number three and number four. Number three is satire. If you remember, we discussed satire in class. Satire is using humor, irony, or a kind of exaggeration to expose flaws in people or in society at large. Satire can also be shown through a very sarcastic or ironic tone um, where they're, the author is acting like something is really not a big deal, even though you as a reader know that the serious, that the issue that's being discussed is a very serious issue. 
um, if you remember in class, uh, we read a modest proposal where the author was proposing that we should, that people should eat babies as a source of food. And this is a very shocking, very serious issue. And he was treating it very like, oh, it's really not a big deal. And he was being, he was being satirical there. Number four is illusion. An illusion is a reference to another work or of art or literature in the text to give a deeper or a, a secret meaning. Um, this work is usually very famous. The two major illusions you're going to see are Greek mythology illusions and biblical illusions. Inside of Repent Harlequin, said the TikTok man, there, there's a large paragraph at the beginning that is a direct quote from the text Civil Disobedience by Henry David Thoreau. Um, and so that's a major illusion that exists in the work. Next vocabulary is two words that exist inside the story themselves and I feel is important for you to know what they are in order to sort of understand why they're being used. The first one is Harlequin. The main character in this story, he has a real name, but he's called the Harlequin by most people. A Harlequin is a kind of clown or a joker. Um, you might recognize the word from the comic book character Harley Quinn. Um, she is, she dresses like a court jester. She's got the tassels on her hat and she dresses in red and black, which are the two major colors. You can see I have a picture of a Harlequin over here in the corner, um, a historical picture, because Harlequins were a historical um, part of uh, a king's court. And they were a joker who would provide entertainment, but usually also giving like a very satirical commentary on the social byplay of the court. Um, and the last one is a cardioplate. This is a fictional piece of technology inside of the story. Um, it only exists in the story, but it's a kind of remote control that the government can use uh, to punish its citizens by stopping their hearts. So that's it for the vocabulary and the big ideas. You've got your next assignment. Um, the part four, the independent work, is for you to read part one, part two, and part three of uh, Repent Harlequin, Cried the TikTok Man, and summarize them in your own words. The story itself is broken up into three different sections that are all about five pages each, and the goal behind this is that it allows you to take breaks in between and still be able to pick up and understand what happened. Record your summaries in your handout, and when you're done, you can submit that. Uh, in order to get extra credit um, or show that you are doing your work. And I'm looking forward to reading it from you guys.